This is the updated Mercedes AMG GT four door. This is the 53 model and in the front grille, typical AMG front grille, we have the vertical fins right there and a new stronger look here with the spoiler in the lower end. This actually is the six cylinder but has the eight cylinder styling package. Headlamps here, LED standard, even the multi-beam LED with more elaborated high beam function. And here we have the three liter inline six cylinder, 367 horsepower with the 43 model or here with the 53 model, with 435 horsepower. And then there's the 4 liter V8 in the 63 model with 585 or 639 horsepower. And news here that the six cylinders will also get mild hybrid technology for the engines. And on top, top of the line will now be then a V8 plug-in hybrid with electric drive in the rear. And this will have an acceleration figure less than three seconds and over 800 horsepower to come very soon. And acceleration figures are four and a half seconds for the top six cylinder model and the so far eight cylinder 3.4 or 3.5 and as i said the new v8 plug-in hybrid will be even faster here the side profile that's what the car is famous for that's why it's also called four-door coupe yeah, there's always the discussion about is there a four-door coupe at all but coupe just means cut in french and yeah that's what they mean here by cut this typical rear ending with really strong shoulders making the car sexy, but also kind of alike with the CLS. But actually this one here has a sportier positioning. So from the suspension, chassis wise, and so on and so on. And suspension wise, you can get the normal suspension, which is already adaptive here. And optional, the air suspension. This is only standard for the 63 models and above. And this has now been updated with a wider span between comfort and sportiness. Wheels come from 19 to 21 inch. These here are also the biggest ones. And in this new styling, aerodynamic styling, really special. And in this case, the optional carbon ceramic brakes with the golden or orange brake calipers. But also when you go for the standard brakes, you can now also get red brake calipers as a contrast. And finally here in the rear, wide accentuated tail lamps. Look at that. And then you have this diffuser style in the lower end. Oh, and a lid for the auto through fake exhaust police. You don't see it from the outside, but when you look closer, then you see the real exhaust tips are just on the inside. This is the car key. We know it, slim and light. And of course, typical for this coupe here, the frameless doors with dual insulation glass. What about the door closing sound? Hmm, very solid considering it's frameless. On the inside, seat controls here, the inside of the doors with carbon fiber situations and in a special edition, which is the car right here, red AMG entry badge, also illuminated. And my favorite feature here, the high floor mats, <laughs> like in the Maybach actually, but AMG style with a contrasting side. Then we have a new steering wheel, like in the E-Class or CLS face up as well, AMG style with the two horizontal fins, but capacitive buttons at the steering wheel, they look fancier also you know, giving some kind of feedback, but still harder to control while driving. Digital instruments and the whole infotainment system also updated with the latest MBUX software, so also now with voice input and hey, yeah. It's my favorite feature with the ambient light also in the air vents. The ambient lighting, first of all, in a swinging central design underneath, and then also the air vents, just lovely. Something, it's too much, but what about you? Do you love it? But do you say it's too much? I think it's exactly right. Oh, and here, by the way, the special edition also gets a special badge. <laughs> here, the new steering wheel also has the driving mode selector here at the steering wheel. That's actually quite practical. Yeah, but then here, the capacitive button controls. Sometimes you just miss what you want to do when you start this sliding thing here. However, the software in the front is actually quite fast. And the good thing to show here is always how we can change the displays, sport, super sport, and so on. And these digital instruments always have a big advantage when it goes to showing the GPS map, because then you can hit the GPS um, you know, either in the middle just, or also all over the place as possible. And the head-up display is always a good option to have. And MUX update for the infotainment system. So here in the map, sometimes of course it can be a little bit faster. And we have comfort, for example, for seat control, seat heating balance, you know, where exactly you want to have the heating. So that's also an interesting feature, like just in the back or just in the lower area. As for performance settings, right here, you have different meters, for example, 
can have your GeForce meter and so on, you can play around with that a little bit or some engine data and so on. So this you know might be interesting then to look at for your passengers and MBUX. Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Drive me to Hamburg. Here is what I found. Ah okay. Wait. So in this is actually quite I interesting. So um it was actually offline, but still this function was available offline. So it always depends, is there an online connection or an offline connection? Online even more as possible. Here offline a little bit less, but you see here some basic GPS functions still work. This is good to know. And of course the Apple CarPlay integration, however, here with bezels left and right. And we have the optional Burmester sound system in here. And let's listen to that. Mm. That sounds delicious. Yes, we still have manual climate knobs. Good to have these. And well, most of the time you would control everything from the steering wheel, but here there's still this, you know, classic console in the lower part where you can change the driving modes. But again, to look down there while driving and just the suspension and so on, rather not do that and rely on the controls on the steering wheel. And to control the infotainment system, there's now also this touchpad replacing the so-called Cobra with which are like reaching out and then the turning knob. But to control while driving, a fixed turning knob is actually more practical because here also you are moving like through thin air. Um, this doesn't give a good feedback while driving. In the front, the carbon fiber cover and then adaptive cup holders and already two USB-C chargers. Under the split armrest, you have one more USB-C charger. And in a way, it's more practical because there's much more space to put your phone. And this is also an inductive charging mat underneath if you want to use that. Seats come with a base sport seat, or this one here is the optional bucket seat. It's slimmer and stiffer. And the standard configuration for the 43 or the 53 would be the Namica microfiber on the inside and Artico or Ambitex leatherwrap on the outside, which is the ideal combination for best breathable features and also that in wind time it stays warm. This one here is the optional animal skin package. So if you want the best comfort actually, stick with the base seats. We have the microfiber material and also the more comfortable seat form. These seats here are better for the racetrack. I'm not sure <laughs> will ever use this guy on the racetrack. It is capable of doing so, however. And headroom here in the front without the panoramic roof. Still plenty with one with A6 or 6 with one. In the rear you can get a bench that goes all the way through or here this single seat configuration with the split middle console that looks a little bit more exclusive. And here's the only practical advantage of these bucket seats. Then the car has more legroom because the seats are slimmer. Tall adults can sit here in the rear. That's, you know, coming close to the CLS. Headroom, really very close, but indeed, for four tall adults, it's fine. And as for the trunk, it's not that practical here because of the high loading seal. However, the length, quite substantial. One meters 15 or 45 inches. Just limited here in the height, especially in this area here with just 15 inches or 40 centimeters. But then it raises here a little bit. And you can also load things through. And this also very easily folds from here. Take off the left side. Yeah, sometimes it needs a little bit help. This is here because of the split seat area. If you would have the through bench, then it also easier folds. So to me, the MBOX, the biggest update with this vehicle, definitely. And I would like to know from you guys, actually, Mercedes CLS and Mercedes AMG GT four-door coupe, they are both the same length. They offer, in a way, same drivetrains. Yes, the AMG GT is more the sportier one with the sportier setup suspension-wise. But still, I mean, length and platform and so on, so many similarities and also pricing wise. But yeah, this one here is like 10 to 20,000 euros more expensive. But then isn't it just, you know, too much the same anyway? Why would you do that? You know, two modes that are actually so close. Really look, would like to hear your opinion on that one. I personally think one of them would have been enough. But the question there is then, of course, which one? Please also tune into our Mercedes CLS 53 video. This was really a blast with a great driving experience, actually. And we also have a great video of one of the main competitors, the Porsche Panamera S Turbo. Oh yeah, and we were not allowed to show you the sound here today, but there's an episode with AJ driving this one here, also on the racetrack. And all of these videos you will also find in the video description or in the pinned comment.